Today, I'd like to answer a very important and fundamental question, which is what is the dielectric constant? The dielectric constant is a concept that we use in uh, to describe the energy stored in the capacitor. So anyone teaching circuit, we use across this concept. And also, if you are in high voltage, the dielectric constant is something we use also uh, frequently. So what is this dielectric constant? Or what we call sometimes the relative permittivity. And to explain this, we will try to see what is the impact of the dielectric constant. In other words, what is the macro impact of it? And then once we understand the impact of the dielectric constant, we will try to go at the micro level and understand how the material or how the dielectric constant behaves so that it will have that impact on the macro on the macro level. So we will start with capacitor. What is a capacitor? It's two parallel plates, conductors. Between them, there is a dielectric material inside which we store the energy. So imagine we have two capacitors. They, we apply the same voltage between the two parallel plates. They have the same surface area. Both have the same surface area, A, and they have the same distance between the two electrodes, D. But in one capacitor, we use certain material A. In the other one, we use another material B. We found that the first capacitor stored X joule amount of energy, while the second one only stored 0.2 X. So why is that? So to explain this, let's go to the fundamental formula that we use to des describe the energy stored in a capacitor which is one half C, the capacitance, times V squared, the applied voltage. Now, as I just mentioned that the two capacitors, we apply exactly the same voltage. So V cannot be the reason why we have discrepancy or difference in the energy storage. Let's go to C. C is equal to epsilon zero, which is a constant, epsilon R, the dielectric constant or the relative permittivity times A, A is the surface area, and D is the distance between the two, the two electrodes. Now, epsilon zero is a constant, so cannot be a factor. A and D, both of them are the same between the two capacitors. So again, they cannot impact, they cannot show why we have a capacitor store more energy than the other. So the only th thing left is epsilon r. So indeed, epsilon r is the one that is responsible when you have two identical capacitors apply the same voltage. It's the only reason why we have differences in the energy storage. This is why some people define the dielectric constant as the ability of the material to store electric energy, which is correct. However, this does not give us the reason why this is happening. This is the impact of the dielectric constant, but the why is still we did not answer it. And to answer the why, I'd like to use a mechanical system because I find that the mechanical systems are easy to grasp, easy to understand because we can see and touch. Electric system, on the contrary, no, you have to imagine them. So I will use an energy stored in a spring. So imagine we have two springs, A and B. They have exactly the same dimensions. We apply the same force to both of them. However, spring A is made from a different material. Now, when we apply that same force, we found that spring A compressed to certain distance, but spring B compressed to much, much, much more which means that I can store more energy in B than in A. Once I release the force, the spring will, uh, will be stretched back and will release that energy, okay? So clearly and obviously, spring B stored more energy because I can compress it more. 
with this understanding, with this basic understanding in our mind, let's try to understand first how the capacitor store the electric energy and then why we have differences based on the dielectric constant. So if I have a capacitor with the dielectric material between the two plates, okay, but no charge, no applied voltage. So we will have what we call dipoles. These dipoles, basically, because these are the atoms inside the dielectric material, you have a negative and a positive charge, and they are neutral. Okay. Now, these dipoles are randomly oriented. So the net electric field inside the material is equal to zero because they cancel each other. Now, let's see what will happen when I apply, basically, an external electric field or a voltage. Now, we apply a DC voltage here, so this is positive and this is negative. Now, you will start to see now those dipoles, for example, look here and look there, they start to orient themselves, okay? Why? Because of we have now an external electric field applied. This is E external. So the negative charge of the dipole will be towards the positive charge of the plate or of the electrode. And also the positive side of the dipole will be pointing towards the negative side of the electrode. And this is for all of them. So now when you look here, Forget about the applied voltage outside. Let's look the in, inside the material that you will have that E net now doesn't equal to zero. There is a, actually a certain electric field stored inside the material. And that is what actually happening. By aligning all these electrodes, you spend energy. Sorry, by aligning all these dipoles, you are aligning them and you are creating an internal source of energy coming from the material itself. And now once you release the electric field, this energy will be released if you connect to it an external circuit. And then until you release all this energy, then we will go back to the original case where we don't have any net electric field, like the spring. You compress the string by external force. Here, you align the dipoles by an external force, which is here the electric field. Once you release them, this stored energy has to be released outside, same like the spring, and same here like the capacitor. Now, with this fundamental understanding how we store the energy inside the capacitor, let's see how the dielectric constant impacts that. Now, the dielectric constant is basically is the, is the ability of the material to polarize. Not all materials polarized at the same way. Same like not all springs behave compressed with the same force the same way, depending on the stiffness of the material. Here, depends on other factors, you will see material polarized more and material polarized less. So if we have less polarization, then the net electric field inside the material will be less. If you have more polarization, then the net electric field will be will be more. So in conclusion, the dielectric constant epsilon r is basically is the material ability to polarize when we apply an external field and hence to store electric energy. Hopefully with this explanation, I make it more clear what do we mean really by the dielectric constant.